Hey guys, welcome back. Check out this video by Ryan Pineda and one round at a time. You know, I just want people to understand this. Like, let's just say you buy this $300,000 house, sure. right? And yeah. let's just say it rents for 2,500 sure. bucks. And uh, let's just say your all-in costs are 22, 2,300, right? So you're not gonna make money. Nope. Even because the 200 bucks is going to get eaten up oh, by somewhere. other stuff, right? Some, one stupid thing. Yep. yep. So you're not going to make any cash flow. Mm -hmm. So people are like, well, when do you actually make cash flow? Well, you're going to make it five years from now. Like mm -hmm. you're saying when, okay, well, rents are now 3,500. And then also maybe we refinanced and we got the rate down and everything else. And now my payment is 2,000, mm -hmm. 1,900, and whatever. And rents are 3,500. And my rents are 30. Now you actually do make it. Yeah. So I want people to know that, that you will not become financially free buying rentals, like being thinking like, oh yeah, dude, I'm gonna buy 20 rentals at 300 bucks a month mm -hmm. cash flow. It's a yeah. 10 year journey minimum. And I don't say any different, it's 10 yeah. years. Kirby, so you've been going on this journey for about 10 years, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but do you agree with the statement that he made or all the all the points that he touched on? Um, I've been on this journey for about eight. So you was close with the 10. So I'm I'm at year eight. Um I agree with a lot of what Ryan Pineda said and even Zuber said. Um I know I got a lot of flack on a video, I believe, that came out last week or short or something when I said if you plan on buying one rental property, you plan to buy five. Of course, people took that as me saying people need to buy five rental properties today. No, what I mean is if you plan to buy one rental property, also have a contingency after that, you're going to get another one and another one. I mean, over time and at least get five. Because what you will see when you get that first rental property, the cash flow will be little to nothing. Uh, you know, $100, $200, $300 maybe. And just like Zuber said on the video, uh, one catastrophic thing to wipe out your cash flow for an entire year, i.e., hot water tank goes out uh here in florida that's about a 1200 dollars fix so what's that four months right there four months of cash flow and then you know ac unit gets fixed i mean i have multiple properties and alex i get a call at least once once a month or once uh once or twice a month of just just random things that just go out like today i just got back from georgia and a property manager called and said the uh, Compressor went on an AC unit that I happened to just buy three years ago. So those things happen. Uh, so when you're starting out that first property, it won't be perfect. The deal itself will not be perfect. I mean, everybody try to, uh, you know, they do analysis paralysis and study uh, real estate and do nothing just to try to search for that perfect deal. The deal won't be perfect. You know, the cash flow is going to be thin and, it's going to take, you know, time for just like they said in the video for that deal to mature so you can do something fancy with it, refi, increase rent, and then you collect the bigger spread to get some cash flow that's necessary. But that's one of the reasons why I say if you plan on buying one rental property, plan on buying five, you know, over a span of time because you're going to need multiple properties to become financially independent from a W-2 job, from cash flow, from rental. And I don't have nearly as much time as you or the guys speaking on the podcast about real estate. But from experience, and I mean, just having my first two years of being involved in real estate, I don't treat my cash flow as money that I should be pocketing. Um, so with his statement where he said it's a 10 year journey, I, I took that as, you know, you shouldn't be looking to live off of cash flow until 10 years into investing in real estate. Um, he may not have specified it that way, but that was the way that I understood it. And just understanding that point because of everything that he said, you know, that cash flow in the beginning stages is going to get eaten up when you have one, two properties, three. The cash flow you're going to be making is not going to be enough really and i think it's important to use cash flow from say your second your third property to begin to kind of build that foundation of your real estate portfolio operating as a business 
So now those first initial properties can kind of start to like pay for themselves, the repairs, maintenance, and things like that. And then not until later on down the road, once you've built out that portfolio, can you start to actually maybe enjoy some of the profits? Yeah, and I, I follow Zuber and Ryan Pineda. When they're saying, you know, it's a 10 year journey, that's when you're really going to see the fruits of your labor. Um, because again, like they talked about in the video, you know, in that time, you're going to, you know, if your mortgage is, let's say, 1200 and then your rent is 1500 10 years from now, that same rent will be, you know, your mortgage is still to be around the $1,200, $1,300 range and your uh, rent to be around the $2,500 range. So you have that spread, you know. I still remember the first property I bought. Everybody, uh, when I tell them about it now, they think that was like one of the best deals or best deals there was in 2000. In 16, when I did it, um, I, I paid cash. Uh, I, I didn't, I didn't know no better, so don't crucify me out there. I paid cash for a condo. I paid fifty-one thousand dollars for it. Even though I paid cash at fifty-one thousand dollars, the rents coming in was around nine seventy-five. Um, nine seventy-five. You know, you still got property taxes. You still got HOA fees, condo dues. So I believe my cash flow itself was around three hundred, three fifty at the time um and then i'm sitting there and i'm thinking like wait it's gonna take me 10 years to get all my cash back and that's if nothing happens and uh anybody that's been owning a rental property for over a day you know issues happen all the time and um and i'm just thinking in that linear aspect like this cash flow is not worth it that's why i say if you plan on buying one plan on buying five even one that's fully paid off for me the cash flow wasn't going to change my life you know, it was like three, it was in the threes, almost fours. And then so, but I'm thinking I'm doing all this for $400 a month, $400 a month. You know, it may pay a cheap car note if I, if I had it, you know, but then you add on to that. Now the deal looks great now. Cause of course the rents then doubled from there. Um, did some uh, maneuvering with the HOA board and things like that to get costs under control. So the HOA payments wasn't going higher uh, and different things like that. So now the deal looks crazy because now when I first bought it, my cash flow was in the threes, maybe high threes, maybe fours. But now the cash flow from that same uh, condo is pushing like twelve hundred, you know, twelve, thirteen hundred dollars a month. So now the cash on cash returns looks ridiculous. But when I first did the deal, it was thin. So the people, people have this idea of, you know, I buy one rental property, I'm set. Uh, one rental property will help you out or assist you out with a bill, especially just starting out or well, not starting out. You, you better keep all the cash flow for repairs. But, you know, if you hold it over 10 years, if you have one rental property, you know, it might help you with a couple bills, but it won't set your financial freedom to where it's at. You know, two, you know, three, four, five, those properties, you know, holding them at that 10 year period. So if we use the same uh, ideal or analogy of the first property I bought. So now I got five that's bringing me in $1,200 a piece. You know, that's six, seven, you know, 7,000 a month in cash flow. Now, I can do something with that. That's could pay a mortgage. I could pay a car note. That could pay medical bills. And that can do uh different things and different aspects like that. But that one and done and or thinking as soon as you buy one, you're gonna be good or better off. That is not simply the case. It does take time in the game. And that's what I implore people get in the game and get started because the longer you wait for that quote unquote perfect deal, uh time is passing. So when you find that perfect deal, you still got time to go on from there to get the cash flow that you was expecting at the time you start yeah well said yeah i just like that video i like all the points that they made michael zuber and uh, ryan pineda they have great information great knowledge on real estate but with all that being said if you like the video hit the like button check those guys out don't forget to share this video subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next one